Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks for the presentation. I'm, I'm David Jimenez, and I'm uh, the game designer and one of the two co-founders of uh, Two Awesome Studio. Uh, you have my contact details there, uh, David at twoawesomestudio.com, and uh, that's invites my, my Twitter. Uh, Two Awesome Studio we, was founded in 2014 uh, between me and Alejandro Santiago. We're just two people, uh, two programmers, actually. And um, I take mostly uh, care of uh, game design, and my colleague takes care of uh, building the uh, back engine of the game, of the games we do. So that's the, what brings us to why we decided to go to Kickstarter. We decided to go to Kickstarter because we started doing games, and we realized that programmer art is just not going to cut it. So we needed to work with uh, artists and musicians to make the game we wanted. And believe it or not, those people need to pay rent, food, and all the stuff. So uh, we decided it was not a good idea to not pay them. So we have to pay them somehow. And that's why, why we went to, uh, to Kickstarter, because we, uh, we were looking for funding to be able to pay those people. So what we did was uh, we uh, made some interviews, we hired some, uh, some people, and based on, on uh, the money that we uh, saw that we needed to complete the, the development and to pay only those, uh, those freelance uh, that are working with us, is the way how we put the target goal of our Kickstarter. So why I'm titling my, uh, my talk uh, Kickstarter Marathon, uh, it's because we did two in a row. So we stayed there for like 60 days. And that's not uh, what you normally expect. You expect to do one in around 30 days. It depends. Some, some Kickstarters go from 25 to 30. That's most of them. And uh, I will explain later how, how this happened and why, why it was like 60 days. So um, my talk is not about, uh, about my game, but I will just give you two, two sense of uh, what's uh, the game that we are doing and what we put in Kickstarter. This, uh, our game is Dimension Drive, and actually you can play it outside. It's a dual screen shoot em up, and uh, that means that we have to play two games side by side, and at any moment, the player can teleport from one to the other. Uh, and all the, the whole game is built around that, built around uh, teleportation. So when I was putting together this presentation, I thought, uh, is there a secret formula or something that I would, one bit of advice that I can give the audience on if you do this, you could get your game funded? And after much thinking, I, I couldn't come up with anything. Um, but then I thought about something. This is the solution. If you have a franchise that is huge and uh, that you can really build upon the, the nostalgia of the people, then you pretty much have it. But this normally doesn't happen. I mean, Shenmue 3 Kickstarter launched more or less around uh, the second uh, Kickstarter campaign we did. And they got, obviously, as you know, they got Insta-funded. They got around 6 million uh, in funding and around 70K backers. And all of this was with almost no footage of gameplay, with a really poor <laughs> presentation of uh, Kickstarter, uh, no demo, no anything. So everything that I'm going to say, these guys, they did nothing of that. And still they got it. But for the rest of the mortals, uh, there's something, this is something you cannot do. So I want to continue this presentation actually saying that you should not trust me. Uh, why, why should you take my advice and, and believe that if you do everything I say, you will uh, succeed at Kickstarter? The truth is that you will not, that uh, if you take all my advice, there's a high chance that uh, you fail. Um, but at least what I'm giving you is my experience, so I hope that you can learn something from it. And uh, to balance a bit this presentation and not just give you my, my point of view, what I did was I, I talked with other developers that have been in, uh, in Kickstarter, 
and I asked them for some bits of advice of just like one quote of, if you could say just one thing, what would you say to, to people that is thinking about Kickstarter? So Tanya from, uh, from Moon Hunters, uh, she basically told me that you have to look at survivor search uh, ship, uh, bias, so you have to concentrate on Kickstarters that have also failed. Uh, this is something that we didn't do, and uh, I think it's also something that damaged us, in, especially in, the, in, uh, in our Kickstarter, because you, you look at the ones that have succeeded, but, uh, and you think, okay, if I do this, if I do that, but uh, you are missing the points of what you should not do, and that's as important, I think. Um, page from uh, Gataela. Uh, she did also a Kickstarter, and uh, one of the important things is uh, you need to ask for the amount you need. Uh, we see more and more Kickstarters coming out and asking for this amount of money, and from the get-go you can see that it's not enough. And uh, this creates two problems. One is trust, because the your potential backers will think that you are not serious or that you have, are, have not properly allocated the budget. And the other problem is that it affects all other Kickstarter rounds because it evaluates the um, perception that people have around Kickstarter. So they think that with very few money, you can make a AAA MMO online, and that's actually not the case. Uh, Don Thacker from Star Maser team, he uh, pointed out that you must commit every second of every day, and I cannot stress how much I agree with this. This is actually this is going to be actually like the biggest take from my talk that uh, you have to be that serious about this because it's going to be like three or four months of full time, including nights, most probably of your life, not your work your life. You will be 24-7 on this. Um, Ruth Korevar, Dutch developer, he points something similar. You have to, what comes up above is that you work hard and that you research what you are doing. Similar kind of advice from uh, Felix. Uh, he did uh, cross-code, not on Kickstarter, but in Indiegogo, but more or less is the same because they used fax funding, so in the end it was a similar approach for them. And this one from uh, Philomena, uh, they are actually in Kickstarter now with uh, this game, Niche, a genetic survival game. Uh, they are, I think, like 250% funded so far, so they are doing pretty well, actually. And for them, their, their main goal was actually to build a community, not, not only for funding. Uh, I added this this morning. I was talking with uh, Kuhn from, uh, from uh, the team of uh, Deliver of the Moon, and uh, one of the things uh, he found important was adaptation. In their, in their Kickstarter campaign, there was one moment where one Twitch streamer decided to take their game and should broadcast it to a massive audience. And from that, they got a huge influx of people coming to their Twitch and coming to their Twitter account. And all of a sudden, they had a huge community that they needed to be able to manage. And that was kind of a make or break moment where if uh, it wasn't with, for their ability to adapt to this new situation and have like, I think they had like three or four people just on community management from that moment onwards, uh, they wouldn't have made it. And this was huge for them. Uh, you will see that in our case, we had kind of a, of a moment like that where we had to take a decision and we had to adapt uh, really fast on, and decide what to do. So, what I would like to say is that one thing is your preparation, your expectations, but while you are there, you need to be prepared to be flexible and adapt to anything that happens during the, the campaign. And that may mean that you have a vision for your game, but people really focus on some other aspect of your game. We have seen uh, this happen, and maybe they, they like the two-player version of your game or for some reason, and you will have to shift your focus, if, if, even if it means that uh, your darling was the main mode or the story mode of the game and you now have to refocus it that way. If you are sh serious about the funding, maybe you, you need to, to make some compromises. 
so that would be my advice. Um, my advice would be try to do everything right. Try to do all the preparations you can. Try to have everything ready by day one. Try to have a community. Try to have everything. And then just pray that you get lucky. Because if I ask, uh, if I ask now, I mean, we are, we are very few people, but um, how many of you are, are doing a game, are developing a game? Or, okay. And how many of you think your game is good? Okay. And if you go to Kickstarter, that means that only in this room that we are not many people, we are, we are very few, you have like five competitors and all of you think your game is good. So your chances of success are a bit bounded by luck, by if press will cover me, if a YouTuber will get to my Kickstarter page, uh, those things you cannot control, you just can adapt to them. And you can more or less try to convince some press and some YouTubers to cover your game, but if that happens, you need to be ready and you need that your game, what you are showing, is 100% ready and prepared beforehand. So it has to be perfect. So what we did in terms of preparation for our, this is for our first Kickstarter. Uh, we started working on an alpha build uh, and to have it ready for press. And uh, we prepared a website for the game where we were concentrating all the traffic. We had a teaser trailer that was launched like three weeks before the Kickstarter. Then we, had, uh, we prepared a launch trailer. We did a green light campaign preparation to start at the main, at the main, at the beginning of the launch of the of the Kickstarter campaign, to have cross fertilization between it, uh, we had to create a ton of art for the website for the Kickstarter page because you see normally when you go to Kickstarter pages, you will see that they are really nice. They have uh, they are animated. They have gifs. They have everything. In reality, uh, when you open the Kickstarter uh, editor, you will find that it's <laughs> kind of empty. It's, it's really empty. It doesn't of, offer you many options. So you will have to create everything else outside and you will have to link to it. So don't count on anything fancy or nice on the Kickstarter backend. Uh, uh, we talked to a lot of Kickstarter dev teams prior to launch. And uh, we had conversations with all of our direct contacts. Everybody that we could talk to, we, uh, we were talking to. We showcased at uh, like three or four events before our Kickstarter campaign. And we were sharing our preview page because when you prepare the, your Kickstarter campaign, once before it's, it's uh, launched, you have an internal link that you can share with whatever. I mean, you can even make it public and get feedback on it before you launch. And I recommend you to do that. Maybe not public, but uh, send it to people that has been there. I mean, um, I'm okay if, if you want to send it to me, if you want to send it to people that has done other Kickstarters. I know that most of people will give you advice and will give you your feedback. I actually know there's, there's one, uh, one story of one Kickstarter that they, they put their internal Kickstarter page like that publicly for one month before launching asking feedback in Facebook, on Twitter, to everybody. And most of the backers that came afterwards were people that was giving feedback beforehand. So they managed to kind of convert all that people to, to, to backers. So that worked out that time. That's one of the things that I want to say, that everything that I said here, and uh, as I said before, it worked once, it may not work twice. So don't take it as... Uh, finally, we wrote tons of personalized emails, like, but really writing them and researching uh, journalists and knowing what they like, what they don't like, and asking them feedback about our uh, our Kickstarter page, and we got some uh, some replies on that. That was good. So this is the graph of uh, our first Kickstarter campaign. As you can see, we failed. Uh, we reached 78% funded. And there's something crazy going on towards the end. And that's, may, many of you maybe I know this from the news, that 
somebody decided to troll with us in the last uh, hours of, of our Kickstarter campaign. We were doing a streaming of uh, our last hours live. And one guy, uh, we know the Kickstarter username was Jonathan, decided to give us the 7,000 euro that was missing to get funded in the last, I think it was in the last two, three hours of, of our campaign. And we got funded. And it was, it was incredible until we received an email from Kickstarter saying that uh, they were just trolling us and that the guy had used a stolen credit card and obviously that's, that money was going out. Uh, that guy apparently did the same to other Kickstarters. I know the people from Herald, uh, also Dutch developers, they, they got hit by this, but it was at the beginning of their Kickstarter campaign, so it was not as damaging as, as, or as, as crazy as with us. And so as I was saying, uh, yeah, there's, the point is you need to adapt. And uh, when that happened, the day after, we didn't know what to do. Uh, we were really thinking, okay, we throw out, we, we finish, and uh, we, we don't do any more Kickstarters, and we cancel the, the game. In the end, uh, we didn't succeed, and, uh, and the whole story was kind of crazy. But what actually happened is that all this uh, prank hugely backfired for, for that guy and actually was massively helpful for us because all of a sudden we were receiving all the traffic that we were not receiving before. And before we were nobody, now we were in all these news sites, we had YouTubers from the US to, uh, talking about what happened in our Kickstarter. And we even had Kickstarter themselves calling us the next morning and apologizing, saying that they didn't know how this happened and, and uh, that they wanted us to, to go again on a second round and that they could uh, uh, help us out uh, by promoting our Kickstarter a bit. So we took the decision of, uh, okay, we had lemon, so let's make lemonade. And uh, we went forward with, uh, with our second Kickstarter campaign. Before moving on to the second one, the summary of the first one, just uh, just for you to have a bit of information, we had like 11,000 uh, video visualizations. All these statistics are coming from the Kickstarter uh, uh, backend. You will have access to all of these if you launch a Kickstarter in real time. Uh, around 30% of the people watched the, our video completely. And from those people, 60% uh, supported the funded, so pledged for the game in Kickstarter. Um, that number, 6%, is like the minimum that you should aim for. Uh, if you see that number going below 6%, indicates that things are going bad, that people that arrive to your page are not converting to backers. And that's actually what happened around our mid-campaign. Uh, mid uh, that number that number was uh, dropping, and so it was not only the number of visits, but people were not backing us. And this is uh, related to what's called the empty restaurant effect. When people see that your Kickstarter is going to fail, your Kickstarter most likely will fail. People like to pile on money where money is put on. So if they see that you are increasing, and that you or your Kickstarter is going to succeed, you will get more and more funding. The other way is also is also the case. So the less funding you get, the less you will get eventually, and you will get drop pledges, and, and things will go from bad to worse. Yeah, we saw the worst of the internet with uh, that troll prank, and then we saw the best because we had lots of people coming in to help. Not only press, not only Kickstarter, not only YouTubers. We had uh, very important developers actually calling us. I don't know how they got our number, but they were calling us and in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. and telling us, "Okay, we need to help you. I will write this guy that I know. I will talk with somebody else that will promote you." And all of this was was really incredible. In the end, uh, all these uh, people together and this story saved our campaign. So you never know what will work for you during your campaign. Be prepared for whatever happens and then try to adapt. This was our second campaign, a uh, much nicer graph than the first one, at least uh, for my team. Uh, the first days were uh, massive. So in the first 48 hours, 
we uh, we got past 20,000 uh, euro when our goal was 30,000. Uh, this was all the traffic that was coming from this troll story. And then we had kind of a nice grow until uh, until more or less the middle. Then the, I don't know if I have a laser, po laser pointer here. I will try with this one, yeah. So here we got funded, and what's funny is uh, that when you are f you get funded, suddenly you are news again. So people were writing again with we had YouTube videos again that we were funded and that we had uh, we were going to stretch goals. So we had another nice bump, and then our mid campaign slump that normally happens through the middle, but as we were funded before, we got it afterwards. And we were expecting to have kind of a big, well, a big, a push like this at the end, but it really didn't happen. And this was, you, you normally should expect that. This is normally what happens if you look at uh, the graphs of, of most Kickstarters you get. And uh, you should have a, a big boost at the beginning, a boost when you are funded, then some growth, and a small boost at the end. Uh, boost at the end. This didn't happen because we launched immediately. And with all the rush and everything, we didn't pay attention that E3 was landing at the end of our campaign. And Shenmue 3 launched during E3, if you remember. So it launched at the same time that we were ending our campaign. And uh, this graph is from uh, Google Analytics. It's not from Kickstarter. You can integrate Google Analytics in your Kickstarter page. I recommend that you do that from the beginning. And you will get much more statistics than you normally get. And what you see here is the the number of uh, visits and sessions that we were having uh, in our Kickstarter page. Uh, so we have a massive influx of people at the beginning, then kind of steady uh, people arriving to our Kickstarter page. This was when we got funded. And we were expecting something like this, but no. Uh, we didn't ha we were not having, this, these are visits to our Kickstarter page and we were, we were having really little compared to, to the end. Uh, it may well as be that uh, people saw that we were funded and we had reached some stre stretch goals and they said, okay, enough. That can also happen. But uh, what I want to illustrate here is that we did this for the first campaign. We make sure that our launch and our end were not clashing with anything kind of huge that would drop completely us into the, into the shadows. But we didn't check this for the second launch. We just launched immediately and uh, didn't pay attention. We to this. Okay. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is um, nationalities and the culture of uh, Kickstarter and where Kickstarter has been active for more time. Kickstarter started in the US and there they really have a culture of funding and investing in, in projects. So what we saw, and this is kind of standard if you talk to other uh, people that has on Kickstarter, is that you will have first United States and closely followed by uh, uh, people from uh, United Kingdom for some reason. And then normally you have uh, your own countries. So I'm Spanish and our company is based here in the Netherlands. So we had Spain and the Netherlands coming in third and fourth. What's important and what you should take out of this is that the United States is huge and is where most of your money will come in. So you need to you need to focus on them and adjust your way of life to their time zone. So we were having kind of weird sleep patterns because we were doing podcasts and joining YouTube uh, people and joining streams on Twitch at 3 and 4 a.m. in the night and then going to sleep. And I remember one time when my colleague Alejandro almost came to my house to kill me because I messed up the time zones and we woke up at 3 and then the, the stream was not starting until 4, so it was kind of messed up. But this is important. Um, the only strange case uh, from the people I've talked with uh, that where this was not... Uh, as such an black and white was uh, talking with the guys of uh, Deliver After the Moon from uh, Koken. 
where most of their backers or many of their backers come from Germany. And this was because like the number one streamer on Twitch from Germany picked up their game and uh, all of a sudden they had a huge German audience. So they are kind of a strange situation where now they do streams on Twitch in English with a German chat. Uh, so, but unless something weird like that happens to you, you will have United States up there. Um, in terms of where the traffic and the funding comes from, uh, this, I don't know if it's big enough for you to read, but anyway, I'll try to... Uh, at the top, you have uh, the direct traffic. So you have like 469 pledges that were coming directly to Kickstarter uh, page. Uh, from those, from that uh, direct traffic, you don't know where they are coming from, but I recommend that you think about it like split it as if it were coming from the other places because it may mean that somebody saw an article on Gamma Sutra or on Kotaku and later they decided, okay, let's go directly to the day after. So it doesn't mean that they come, you cannot count them as coming from Kotaku, you don't know, or from Gamma Sutra, but they have to come from somewhere. They don't come directly to your website, okay? But once you uh, remove that out, uh, you have to count that uh, your social media is going to be really huge. So this I recommend that you prepare in advance, like six months in advance, start building a community in Twitter and Facebook, promote your game so that when you launch your campaign, you should aim at 10 to 25% of funding guaranteed. If you are not able to say with confidence that the day I launch in 24 hours, I will have 10 to 25% of my ask funded for sure, you are in big trouble already. So concentrate on, on that. And building a community through social media is, is, is something really important. Uh, Kickstarter itself will bring you some... You see here, search on Kickstarter. You see this last eight, 48 hour reminder and uh, other Kickstarter uh, links. All of this is Kickstarter itself. So it means that people, when they are searching on Kickstarter, they find not only what they are looking for, but they find also some other suggested Kickstarters. They at in the 48 hours reminder, it means people that has come to your website, to your Kickstarter uh, page and has cl clicked the remind me later, and then they will receive an email 48 hours before your campaign expires. Those people are important. And other Kickstarter links, uh, this is something that I will talk about later, and it's uh, Kickstarter in the end, you have to see it also like its own social network. People have profiles there, they comment, they go from one project to another. And so don't, don't launch your Kickstarter from an account that you just created the day you launch. Try to have an account that has been there for like one year and has been moving around, has been backing other Kickstarters, has left comments in there, an account that is, doesn't look like empty. And uh, also what you will do is with that account you can talk with other Kickstarter uh, developers that are running Kickstarters at the moment or they have run Kickstarters in the past so that they can send updates and comments to their backers to say, hey, you should check this other Kickstarter also. And that brings, that, that will, that works pretty well actually. Um, obviously, press is important. Uh, you can see that from Polygon only, we got like 62 uh, pledges. It's not something to disregard. It's like 3% in the end. They seem small numbers, but uh, my colleague, uh, was every day saying like something to me, it was like backer by backer. So you are having, your numbers go one by one in the end. So even if, you, you should never disregard just one person because in the end you are, you are looking at them as, as, as a combination. This is a summary of our uh, second Kickstarter page. Uh, second Kickstarter, uh, uh, so we had 63,000 uh, visits. That was much better than first time. Uh, 18,000 completed video plays. Uh, uh, no, sorry, 18,000 video plays and 32% completed. We had a much better number of uh, support. 
around 7.2 support our campaign. Other thing that it's important is that people will drop pledges during the middle of the campaign, and this happens. This happens in all the campaigns I've talked with, uh, and you shouldn't take it personally. It was affecting me a lot when we were running it, and I was seeing people were cancelling. I was thinking, okay, the last update I sent, I fucked up, and now they they don't. These guys they don't like the project anymore, so they left. Uh, you shouldn't think that way. People change their minds, and maybe they saw something else that they liked better, or they decided, okay, I'm, I don't want to, or I cannot spend like 20 euro this month or whatever. For some reasons, people will drop uh, pledges during the campaign. You have to allocate for that when you are doing your, uh, um, when you are preparing the your target goal. Um, then there's uh, a percentage of pledges that will fail after you have finished your Kickstarter and Kickstarter tries to collect the money from their banks. This is also normal and this happens because uh, some banks may have uh, weird setups or that person doesn't have funds the moment that they try to collect the money and around 2% is a, is a kind of regular number, you should expect something like that. So from our results, from the th almost 37,000 euro that you see there, in the end, after everything was all said and done, we collected around 31. This is important when you prepare your target goal. You have to consider that there is a kind of a big percentage that will go to drop pledges, fail pledges, Kickstarter fees, taxation, anything else. So plan accordingly. And consider the cost of shipping and physical rewards if you are doing them. Coming to our, uh, our reward tires. What we did, uh, this is a huge table. I don't, want you to, I don't want to scare you with all the numbers. But this, these were all of our reward tires. And what I, uh, I did here is I show you the, um, our expectations. So you see the our estimation of the amount of backers that we were expecting there and the real backers that we got in the end, and the same with money. I recommend that you do this when you are preparing, and if your estimation is already below your target, uh, you have kind of a problem. <laughs> uh, it doesn't mean that you have to uh, fake it so that it matches, but do your research, look at other campaigns that have a similar target as, you, as yours, that are in the same genre, and see if how much people they have in the different tires if they are more or less in the same values. So what I'm showing you here is uh, all those ones, uh, they were really below our expectations. These were kind of aligned with our expectations. And these ones, for some reason, worked really well. So what it's important uh, that you take from here is that uh, most people will go for your game, and that's it. Um, some people ask, went for the game and a bit more, but this was also still a, a very cheap tire. So you will have huge numbers in the in the in the small tires. We had kind of bad numbers in the middle tires, and in the big tires, uh, it worked a bit better, as you can see. So for some reason, um, in our Kickstarter, our mid-priced Tires were maybe not attractive enough, or they were not providing enough uh, value for money for the people that uh, were backing. So they didn't work out that well. That's something that you have to decide and, and see how, um, how to make those tires attractive. Uh, we, we didn't manage to, to do these uh, mid, mid, uh, mid uh, price tires attractive in that sense. So what went right uh, in the second campaign? Obviously, that we got massive uh, press coverage. That was uh, extremely important because it meant that on launch, on the first 48 hours, we had already like 70%, 75% funded. That's not something you expect. Social media worked extremely well the second time around. This time, and we didn't do this for the first uh, campaign, we put an alpha build ready and available for everybody to play. And that was removing one of the biggest problems that Kickstarter has now. 
Um, I mean, you've you've seen everything in Kickstarter. You've seen people that uh, they they cancel the Kickstarter and then you see on the press that they they spend the money on booze and parties and uh, or uh, or they just disappear with uh, the money. I mean, I think like two days ago there was or one Kickstarter that cancelled, and all of a sudden it it appeared on press that they were using interns unpaid interns for five years to do everything and then there was one guy just putting all the money in the pocket so people have a massive problem with trust and uh, having a product that is playable and publicly playable for people is something that kind of helps remove a bit that problem uh, crossovers and cross promotion with other kickstarter uh, work really well we did we were promoting other Kickstarters and other Kickstarters, as you see these there, Starmacer and Drifting Lands. Uh, those are just two of them, but they were kind of the biggest ones in terms of traffic that they came. The, the, the time, the day that the Starmacer did the promotion, the cross promotion with us was was one of the best uh, days in in terms of uh, of pledges. And uh, from our tires. The ones that worked really well also were the interactive ones. And by interactive, I mean uh, people that can affect your game in some way. So we had like name, we had one that was called like name your enemy. So we gave the ability to those people to name one enemy in the game. Eventually we ran out of them and uh, we couldn't do any more because we had no more enemies in the game. So, But this this was one of the ones that worked uh, re really well or uh, uh, the ones that where uh, we left the opportunity to, to people to help us and give us ideas on uh, bosses uh, for the game that also sold out. Um, so think about this kind of thing, and if you can include it in, in your Kickstarter, this may help you. Uh, what went wrong? And here I'm talking about, in general, both campaigns. Our visibility expectations for the first campaign were really way out. I mean, we, we were expecting that we will get featured in more places and we will get more traffic. But in the end, it was really impossible. We uh, uh, we tried to sell our story to YouTubers and the press and not much, not many were picking up. As I said, the mid price tires were uh, kind of a disaster. The alpha demo was not ready uh, on day one for our first Kickstarter. And actually we were developing it while doing the Kickstarter, so that was kind of crazy. Our updates were not ready for our second Kickstarter. This is also important. You should do updates at least every two days to keep your traffic and your community engaged. And they cannot be like, hey, we are doing fine. We just uh, passed the 20% mark they have to have some meat. So they have to have some new piece of art or new piece of gameplay or uh, explain something about your studio. They have to have some content. And coming up with this, if you don't have it planned and prepared beforehand, is a nightmare. So think like one month before and have all these updates ready uh, so that you can just, okay, we publish this one now and because it fits with what's going on now. Um, Many people don't have credit cards, and Kickstarter only ac accepts uh, credit cards. We didn't have any options to get fund uh, to to add funding from s other places, um, but I've seen Kickstarters that are opening in their website uh, the option to pledge via PayPal or Handle, and then they put that money afterwards in Kickstarter to top up the the budget. Uh, I recommend you to prepare that. There's also some like prepaid credit cards in the Netherlands and in Germany I've seen that you can just buy and they work for like 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 a credit card but it's not a real credit card and those work. And uh, well the, what went wrong also was that we almost burnt ourselves out after 60 days in in there. Some uh, final advice. Um Contact press and YouTubers well in advance. And when I mean well in advance, I mean not like two weeks in advance. I mean months in advance. If they have played your prototype, even better. If they have written about your your game before you tell them we are going to Kickstarter, it's much better because they don't like, which is normal, they don't like to cover Kickstarter projects anymore just because 
of the problem I, I mentioned before, because mo many of them has have uh, hugely failed even after uh, after getting funded. So YouTubers and press uh, will prefer to write about things that can play, and then if they like your game, they may write afterwards when you launch a Kickstarter. Uh, I said this already, try to talk with other Kickstarter uh, projects before and uh, have a plan with them so that uh, on such date we are going to do something together or we are going to do a, even a, a tire in both Kickstarter pages that will give backers from my Kickstarter page something on your Kickstarter and things like that. This works really well because you have kind of crossing the audiences and people that is in the middle and like both games, they may fund both of you. So this, this, was, this was working really well. Um, the three Fs. This goes hand in hand with what I said before of you need to be able to warranty that 10, 25% of your funding is going to happen for sure on the first 24 hours. And th that funding mostly comes from friends, family, and followers. So it's people with, that have like a direct contact with you. And it, this can be every, everybody. I mean, talk to, uh, talk to the person that you see in the gym every day that is not even your colleague, but that you see him, them like every week. Tell, tell, tell them about your, uh, about your game. Tell them about your Kickstarter, that this is happening. They need to know that this is happening, the day that this is happening, and they need to be ready with the wallet to pledge. Share your Kickstarter page pre-launch. Updates every two days. At least, if you do more, I mean, I remember one day that we did two in a row and I have some family that were telling me, hey, stop with the spam. Um, then have the updates ready before the launch and cross promo with Kickstarter that are currently running, not only with the ones that have been funded before and that, that kind of massive, the ones that are kind of massive and they got funded in the past and they, if they can promote you, that's nice. But the ones that are running, it works really well because those backers are there at the moment. So um, YouTube and Twitch, obviously, as you can imagine, is essential. And I talk about social media. One of the important things that many forget and we forgot when we, I wrote uh, the Kickstarter page and I will, uh, will point you later to, uh, th there are some links at the end of my presentation of uh, things that may help you. One of the links is to the Twitter account of uh, Indie Gamer Chicks. She's kind of a gamer critic and she also works in investment. So she, she, she advises on, on investors on what and where to invest uh, money on. And uh, if you talk to her um, and you send her your uh, Kickstarter uh, page before launching, she will look at it and she will review it and she will probably tear it to pieces like she did with ours. And you will be really happy that she does this because you will find all the problems that you have before you launch because you don't want to find those later. And one of the things that many people forget is remember to sell. You are there asking for money. You are, yes, you are building a community. Yes, you are showing how good your game is. But uh, if I take the first draft of my page, it was just, my game does this, my game does that. Look at this nice piece of art. But what you need to do is like in every two or three pages is your money is going to go towards this. And this is why you, we need your money. To create this piece of art, we need to pay such and such artist. And this is why we need your money. So... In your whole Kickstarter page and in your video, everywhere in, around, and when people talk to you during those three months that your campaign is, is going to, to go on, because it's not one month, it's the month before, the month during, and the month after, you should be ready to sell them the game. And people should buy you the game. And if you are not able to uh, sell your game to somebody that you are talking person to person, like here in indie development, uh, you go to somebody, you show them your game, would you give me 10 euro for my game? If you are not able to do that in person here and you are shy about it, you will have a really hard time in, on Kickstarter because that's something that you need to do like 24 seven. Uh, staff picks, uh, I think now they call it, uh, it was Kickstarter staff picks, now they call it something like projects we love in Kickstarter. Uh, um, 
Kickstarter themselves will pick some projects and will uh, make them kind of recommended, and then they are featured in the landing page in games when you go there. That's kind of big, and that's kind of something you want. And believe it or not, staff picks are selected by Kickstarter staff, and those are just people. And they have an email address. So if you write them and you explain them why your game should be a Kickstarter uh, staff pick, maybe they buy your story. So try. Don't wait for them to maybe magically decide that your Kickstarter is going to be a staff pick because that doesn't happen. Most of the staff picks are because somebody initiates from the other side. Um, yeah, as I said, your game is never going to sell itself, so you need to be ready to sell it all the time. Your video has to be really, really good because that's that's probably something that the only thing that many people will see. The many people will not like to read. They will just go to your Kickstarter, watch your video, like one minute. They will have enough, and then they will decide click away or just pledge to the right. And to the right is your cheapest tire. So um, have that in mind. I mean, I've seen Kickstarters where the video is really well put together. It lasts like one minute, and after that one minute, they call to pledge. And just below the the first thing they do after in the in the starting text is not text. It's just an image of pledge here with an arrow to the tire that they want you to pledge. And this kind of works. You are you can have tires that you open and close. You can you can close them and open them manually. So some people open tires for like 24 hours when they start at the cheapest price so to rack up the numbers and then when the 24 hours are over they close them and then they open them at a higher price kind of like a launch discount if you if you think about it ideas like this help um, i still think that uh, an alpha is is a must or really important there are some kickstarters that make do without them and uh, Especially if you are a big name or uh, you have contacts in in the industry that can uh, promote you, maybe you can make it work like that. But if not, I uh, think a, a build of your game that, that can be passed around and that can go to YouTubers and streamers and things like that is really needed. If you take only one thing from this, is that it's ten, ten times more work than you think. Uh, and you should have all of this as much prepared as possible because when you are running it you will barely have time to just reply to the comments, talk to the community that you are building and a few things. You have a lot of competition. Uh, find your story, find a way to promote your Kickstarter and uh, we tried the first time explaining our background that uh, that uh, both of us, my colleague and me, are coming from the space industry and we are doing a space game Tried, we tried like that, uh, pressed it and pick up the story. The second time around with uh, all that drama, obviously we, they, they picked it up. So try to find a way. And family support here, no, I'm not talking about money. Uh, money is important, yes. I said you are here to sell. Uh, what I'm talking about is it's hard. You will spend days and nights at your desk. I remember many, many days just where my wife was bringing me food to the table and uh, and I was not moving from the desk. So uh, think that they talk to them and explain them what's going to happen because they are going to run this thing with you. And I was about to say shit, but... <laughs> um, so they need to be convinced and they need to be ready to be by your side. If uh, there is some kind of friction on what's going to happen, it's better that you iron this out before because yeah, it's going to be huge. You are going to be disappearing for like three months, full-time work, days and nights. Uh, so we are reaching the end of my presentation. That's, that's everything I wanted to say. Uh, I leave you here some links. Obviously, you will not be able to type them. But uh, I hope you can see this later if uh, it's uh, recorded. Otherwise, uh, uh, we will upload these slides directly to our uh, to our website, and I will link them in in my Twitter account. Uh, if you can take only one thing, take this one, as I said, and talk to this woman when 
you have a pre-launch Kickstarter page ready with video and text and everything. Okay. Thank you very much. That's the end of my talk. Uh, normally that that should not uh, scare you away. What you are looking mostly is for traffic and uh, people that drop pledges, they don't drop them because they find uh, a Kickstarter that you are cross-promoting to somebody else. Uh, mostly what the people that uh, come from one Kickstarter to the other are very hardcore fans of uh, your Kickstarter or their Kickstarter. So it's very difficult that those people, they drop. Normally, the people that would drop are the people that they don't read your updates and that they just pledge the first day and they forget about it until you launch the game. Uh, but people that is actively there in the Kickstarter community, those those are your core fans, and you should. It's not just about the cross promo. Those they will they will be your core of the community even afterwards. I mean, we have those guys. Uh, I know them by name now, and they now leave comments on, on Steam like hours after we push an update of our build. So you have to be really treat those guys well. That's that's my recommendation. And uh, but no, I, I don't think I think the gain the the benefit outweighs the the losses that you may have. Yeah, we approached them the first time, as I explained. Uh, we, uh, like with any press release, so we dropped them an email and we explained them what, that our game had launched in Kickstarter. And uh, we explained them briefly why we thought it was a nice, uh, a nice uh, game to promote in uh, as a staff pick. And yeah, we, we got it. I think it was like 40 hours later we, we got uh, picked. The second time we didn't have to ask because they already we had their phone even and uh, and uh, and actually actually my colleague Alejandro met one of the Kickstarter staff in person at Kuobadis in in uh, no at Amaze in Berlin so so yeah we we didn't have to ask the second time around but yeah it happens if you ask you may have a chance <laughs> if you don't you don't.